Hi, I am Dr. Santosh Kumar. I am currently working as an assistant professor in Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Valjad College of Applied Sciences, Moscow, Oman. These days, internet has become cheap source of information for everyone, ranging from school to children to the university professors working in highly specialized labs. To get information from internet, everyone is using search engines. Search engines retrieve documents for your queries. Now it is on to the user to read the documents, find the relevant answer. This process wastes a lot of the time of the user. So researchers came up with the idea of question answer systems which can return the precise answer of the query and in that which that will save a lot of the time of the user. So in today's lecture, I will tell you about the question answering systems. So what is the question answering? Question answering can be defined as an information retrieval and extraction technique that given a collection of documents such as the World Wide Web or a local purpose the tips and present precise answer to the question posed in a natural language. Now different types of the question answering systems. We can classify question answering system according to the various criteria. For example, what type of the domains they are covered. According to that, there are two types of the question answering systems. Restricted domain question answering systems and open domain question answering systems. Restricted domain question answering systems, they answer question posed in a selected domain, for example, medicine, education. Open domain question answering systems, usually they answer questions from the multiple domains. Second criteria for classification of question answering system is information retrieval technique. According to that, there are two types of the question answering systems. They are called rule-based question answering systems and statistical question answering systems. Then third criteria is uh, answer source from where they are gathering the answers. So according to that, there are three types of the question answering systems, automatic question answering systems, collaborative question answering systems, and hybrid question answering systems. Automated question answering systems, they, uh, these type of the question answering systems, they collect the documents, retrieve the answers themselves, and present the answer to the user. In the collaborative question answering system, there are several users which are writing answer to the possible questions. The job of question answering system here is to match the user question with the sum of the, uh, with uh, predefined questions and present the possible answers. Hybrid question answering system, they use the mixed approach. Another criteria for classification of question answering system is that from where, where is their knowledge base? So according to that, there are again three types, web-based question answering systems, corpus-based question answering systems, and hybrid question answering systems. Web-based question answering systems, their knowledge base is whole worldwide web. Corpus-based question answering systems, their knowledge base is a selected set of the documents which are stored locally on the server. Then hybrid question answering systems, they use both. Finally, we can classify question answering system according to the language. Monolingual question answering systems, they use documents from the single language, they accept questions from the single language. Multilingual question answering systems, they accept questions from the multiple languages and they give answers in the multiple languages. Now, anatomy of the question answering system. A typical question answering system consists of the three different phases. Question processing phase, document processing phase, and answer processing phase. Question processing phase in turn consists of different sub phases classification of the questions, derivation of expected answer types, keyword, expand, keyword extraction, and query expansion. Document retrieval in turn consists of two sub phases document retrieval and passage identification. Answer processing phase consists of candidate answer identification answer ranking and answer formulation and finally question answering system present answer to the user. Now come to the question processing phase. The first important sub phase of question processing is question classification. A research done by Muldoon et al. it shows that 36.4% of the error 
occurred by occurred in question answering systems happen due to the incorrect question classification so question classification is very important phase question classification phase helps us to determine the what is type of the answers are expected from the question to do that we need the help of the natural language techniques such as support vector machines i have defined certain question patterns these are function word questions these questions for example name the highest mountain in the world second type of the questions patterns are when questions when questions usually we are expecting answers date time etc and they start with the keyword when followed by do does did followed by some noun phrase verb phrase etc where questions we are expecting locations which questions we are expecting some noun phrase similarly there are who question whose question whom questions we are expecting name of some person or some agent then why questions where we are expecting some paragraph as an answer how questions again we are expecting some paragraph and what questions next sub phase of question processing is query expansion query expansion can be defined as the process of supplementing the original query with the additional terms the main if aim of the query expansion is to reduce the gap between syntax and semantics so query expansion can be done in two ways probabilistic approach and ontological approach probabilistic approach consists of finding the terms related to each other in the document based on the probability of occurring the one term ontological methods they try to determine the semantic relationship between the terms with the help of ontology and then find the related words some pre processing is required before we are going for the document retrieval or even for the query expansion some of them are phrase finding and stop word removal phrase is very important for example operating system operating system operating system adds what to as a phrase it indicates some software but if you are taking operating word as separate and system as separate its meaning will be different so to identify the phrases we need to write some grammars there are certain tools are also available on the internet one of them is clouds c l a w s and i have given here link for your reference second one is a stop word removal there are certain words for example each am should would this that these words are doesn't contribute much to the meaning of the sentence so that can be removed later next phase of question answering system is document processing so document retrieval phase it searches for the documents containing possible answer of the user query ranks them and passes it to the answer processing phase for extraction of possible answer sentences it is very difficult to design an independent document retrieval engine particularly for the open domain question answering systems so most of the open domain question answering system at the back end they use the commercial search engines such as google some of the prominent prominent document retrieval methods are tfidf schemes that is term frequency inverse document frequency schemes related semantic indexing and ontological based methods final phase of a question answering system is answer processing this answer processing phase takes documents retrieved and ranked by document processing models as input then it identifies the correct answer sentences present in the documents then it tests for the correctness by applying the answer validation techniques ranks according to the similarity scores and finally present the answer to the user so here i am proposing a steps for the answer identification first of all we assign zero weightage to all the sentences in the document then presence of the keyword in the question gives weightage one to the that sentence so for example there are five questions five keyword questions from the question 
which are present in that sentence, so its weight will be 5. Then we try to find out the semantically related words in that sentence and we assign a weight of 0 0.8 for each semantically related word. So final formula for calculating the score for the sentence is summation of keywords plus 0 0.8 multiplied the semantically related keywords. Once we have assigned the weight, then we do the answer validation. There are several heuristics for the answer validation. Here I am discussing three of them. Similarity computation, name entity matching and finally wave relevance feedback. In similarity computation, we try to parse the sentence using the NLP techniques. We try to design the different patterns for the candidate answer sentence and then we make parse tree as shown here. See here, for example, a question is in what year did Arundhati Roy receive a Booker Prize? There are separate, there are various possible answer format for this question. So we are designing that formats and then we are making the parse tree for them. Um, if you can, the candidate answer sentence is able to match, what fraction of that is able to match, we are sending weight according to that. Then the next heuristic is entity type. All questions have certain expected answer type. For example, how far is Mars from the sun? So we are expecting some distance, that is some number in the answer, candidate answer sentence. So if after the similarity computation, if we are getting the candidate answer sentence which contains some number, so that is likely to contain the correct answer. Final heuristic is wave validation. It is based on the assumption that most of the users who are writing information on the wave, they are giving the correct information. So accordingly, if the can selected candidate answer sentence is validated by at least 20% of the documents, it is selected as the correct answer sentence. Finally, I will discuss about the performance evaluation of the web based open demand question answering systems. Like any other system, evaluation of the question answering system is very important. You can evaluate question answering system along the two dimensions system centered and user centered. System centered evaluation considers two parameters recall and precision. Recall can be defined as number of relevant documents retrieved divided by total number of total number of relevant documents in the information space. Precision can be defined as number of relevant documents retrieved divided by the total number of documents retrieved. So, in that way, precision is very important for question answering system. Of course, recall is also important to give the maximum number of the documents. Now, some of the system centered evaluation forums. TRIC is the most popular system centered evaluation forum, followed by the CLEF. CLEF is for the multiple languages, multiple language question answering systems. Others are Duck, Fire, Inex, NTCIR. User-centered evaluation was not discussed till very recently. In 2008, Ong et al. They proposed 12 different dimensions for the performance evaluation from the user point of the view. These are information quality, system quality, service quality, information satisfaction, system satisfaction, service satisfaction. Perceived usefulness, perceived ease of use, intention to use, and use behavior. So, I did user centered evaluation of some of the question answering systems. So, it was done in two phases. First was question collection, second was answer evaluation. In the question collection phase, I collected 300 different questions from 30 different domains, collected from the various sources such as trade documents, world book, world fact book. I categorized all 300 questions into six different categories, factoid questions, list questions, contextual questions, textual image retrieval questions, biographical questions, and other complex questions. In the answer evaluation phase, I defined two parameters, 
how easily answers are available to the user, how easily answers are understood by an average user. Accordingly, I gave 11 different criteria and I assigned weight to them ranging from 1.0 to 0 at the interval of 0 0.1. So, first criteria is if an exact answer is present in the expected format and displayed in one of the links, then weight is given 1.0. For example, I am asking question, what is the height of Mount Everest? And if the link mentions the exact height, then it is given weight of 1.0. If correct answer is displayed, but it requires some interpretation, for example, in a further resolution. So, in that case, weight is assigned 0 0.9. Similarly, weight is assigned 0 0.8. If answer is not present in the link, but it is present in the first paragraph of the document, uh, link uh, referred by that one of the links. Similarly, 0 0.7 and all. We are assigning weight of 0 if there is no answer at all. I chose five different question answering systems, start, answer bus, power answer, brain boost and infrared for my evaluation purpose. All of these are open domain and weight based, but they differ in their technique and the language they cover. For example, start, answer bus, power answer and brain boost, all they, come, they are rule based, but infrared is statistical. Similarly, start and then power answer, they are monolingual, others are multilingual. Then I gave them 300 questions. Then infrared retrieve the maximum number of correct answers equal to 225 and I start get the least number of correct answers 144. However, the precision of the correct uh, answers which required least interpretation was by the start 139 out of 144. Then to check the understanding of the question answering systems. I devised some query modification rules. These are changing keywords position. If original question is how far is Mars from the sun, I change the question to how far is the sun from Mars. Then word substitution. For example, question is what planet has the smallest surface area? The question was changed. What planet has the least surface area? Then Another rule is changing the voice from active voice to passive voice and vice versa. So question is what is the most famous theory given by Newton? The question was changed to the what is the most famous theory Newton gave? Sometimes sentence formatting was done. So in, in interrogative sentences were changed to assertive and vice versa. So for example, question is, who first discovered radiocarbon dating? The question was changed to name the person who discovered radiocarbon dating. Sometimes we expanded or contracted acronyms. Then sometimes factual phrasing was done. For example, all of you know that Jupiter is, Jupiter is the biggest planet. So question is, what is the Jupiter atmosphere made of? So change the question to enumerate the constituents of biggest planet of the universe. So once all the questions were modified according to those rules, now again they were given to the question answering system and this is the result. Without any exceptions, all the question answering system, they gave the correct answer of the least number of the questions. So infrared now gave 173 questions instead of 20, 225 questions. So the its performance went down by 23.11%. So in fact, all questions, all question answering systems, their performance went down by almost 30 percent. So what does it indicate? It indicates that there is a lot of scope for research in the field of the question answering systems. I will present some of the methods in my next lecture. Here I am giving you some of the reference which you can find about to know more about the question answering systems and related research in that field. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good day.